So, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our episode of Exaflix again. And this evening, Hackers, the 1995 film, is the one that we're going to be discussing. And we've brought a bunch of guests along. And I'm pretty sure that all of these guests, with the exception of two, if I count myself, um, are not are, are okay, are all fans of the film. And what we'll do in a few moments is I will ask each of the guests just to give us a very brief kind of introduction, just their name, a tiny little bit about them. But as they're doing that, if they, if you could, if there's a particular character in the film that you would like to mention at this point, it doesn't matter if you want to mention the same character that somebody else has mentioned, but if there was a certain character that stood out for you, in whatever way, like they're your hero, your heroine, uh, you thought they were really cool, uncool, then go for it. So I'm gonna suggest in the order that I can see people on the panel on the screen, that what we'll do in a moment, we'll start with Ian, then with Peter, then Les, Estelle, Claire and Nikki. Nikki, you're at the bottom of my Zoom screen at the moment. Now. Um, we are live on YouTube at the moment. So some people will be watching this live rather than watching a recording. And they are, they are already chatting. So we'll go and have a look and see what people are chatting about. And we can interact with those if we want. We've got Jim and Ben and Jerry already on there. So Ian, are you ready to tell us who you are and your favourite character from the film? So um, I'm Ian Forrester um, and I work for a big... Um, Broadcasting Corporation. <laughs> um, the the character, and I, I have I have like fun reasons, but I have legitimately important reasons why is Lord Nikon. Um, I just think he's just the best. So, so we had Peter next. Hi, I'm Peter. I'm I'm a guide at the National Museum of Computing. Um, I've got a particular interest in this movie because um, I used to catch hackers back in the 90s, 80s, late 80s and 90s. Um, and um, I was just interested to see the portrayal of some of the characters in it and how accurate, and if that's the right term, I thought that portrayal was. Uh, and there are some interesting parallels. I, 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 I hated the movie, if I'm, if I'm really honest. I thought it was really corny and there's no storyline to speak of. But... But there are some interesting little bits of that are quite accurate in there, from my experience anyway. Um, and my favourite character, I'm going to be all cliched now, is Acid Burn, of course, because, you know, if I was that age then, and if only every female hacker looked a bit like Angelina Jolie, <laughs> well, great. I mean, th that's just not real either. But you know, so, so I'm stepping outside my comfort zone by saying that. So okay. I'll and we go to Les, are you going to introduce yourself? Hello, my name is Les Bounder. I'm the Associate Editor at Tom's Hardware. And I've been watching Hackers for many years since it came out on VHS. And I think I identify myself more with the plague, the bad guy, because it's always fun to be the bad guy in a movie. <laughs> you get all the best lines and the best scenes. And Estelle? Hi, I'm Estelle Ashman. I'm curriculum content developer for Digital Schoolhouse and I'm also a computing teacher. Um, my favourite ca character was also Lord Nikon. Um, I don't know what it is about him. I think he's probably the only one that has a little bit of mystery about him, especially when you first are introduced to him. He's got that amazing hood. Um, so, and I think he's probably the only one that's a little bit more level-headed as well. Um, so yeah, I think I, I agree with you, Ian. He's the, the best. Okay, and Claire? Um, I, yeah, I'm Claire Price. I'm a biochemist at Swans University Medical School, so basically I get to play in a lab all day, so fun times. Um, I came quite late to Arkas, uh, not that many years ago that I've um, actually watched the film, but it is it's one of the films I go to again and again and again, especially during the last two lockdowns. I have to admit, it's been on my playlist. Um, one of my favourite... Favourite characters, I don't know. I, I have to admit, I love them all. But if I have to pick one, it would probably be Kate. 
aka acid burn just because there's this one bit where they talk about a new computer and it's the look on our face and I just feel like that's me that's how I feel about computers so yeah and Nikki Hi, I'm Nikki Donino. I'm a principal lecturer in computer science at the University of Central Lancashire. Um, I was a student at university when this film came out, so I have very, very fond affiliations with it. You know, one of the things I have to say is um, when I was studying, I was the only female on my course. So I do feel, I mean, I love Acid Burn just because she is the only female and and she can kick butt on video games as well. You know, she can beat all the boys. But the characters that we see in this movie, those were my friends when I was at university. And that's why I really love this film. And uh, I have to argue that um, Estelle, Acid Burn is also very level-headed because she's going to MIT. That's true, that's true. You know, <laughs> so we can just argue that uh, Lord Nikon was the only level-headed one. I think she was, uh, she was like Janice. She had that cool hacker persona, but then she was fashionable. She had lots of friends. She was going to a really good university. So I, I really like that about her. You can be kiki and you can be cool and you can be successful all at the same time. So um, I'm, gl I'm really glad Peter's joined us tonight because I was hoping that uh, by the end of tonight's episode of Exaflix, you'd be able to convince me that it's, it's a film worth watching again and again. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, I've only watched it tw twice. I haven't watched it quite as many times not, as Ian's millions. Times. Not enough times. Um, <laughs> so, what's your favourite scene, Alan? Well, I was going to turn the questions, Nikki. <laughs> Just the way it works. I think I would struggle to have a favourite scene, but while I think of what that may be, that's the question I was going to put to the panel. Have you been reading my questions, Nikki, beforehand? <laughs> no. So Should I was I? Just, I was going to ask somebody, somebody who doesn't mind speaking up and maybe putting the host in their place could now tell us what their favorite scene is and then others can chip and go oh yeah or mm, yeah. it's not quite as good as so favorite scene who's going I'll, I'll go because honestly I love this film I have it ingrained in my head um when we first meet Razor and Blade I mean <laughs> come on those guys are cool not only are they cool, they drink jolt I remember when I was a student we were ordering <laughs> jolt crates from America <laughs> And we all wanted to drink jolt, horrible stuff, you know. But the reason I like Razor and Blade, actually, in all seriousness, is they were they were activists, and they were probably the first impressions that we've got of what we now call maybe social media activists, people who have no political power as such, they have no financial power, and yet by the medium of the internet, they can make true change in the world. And I really love that about them. And they're just a fabulous duo, aren't they? Just love them. <laughs> Are they more cool than K-pop, would you say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because there's, they, those two characters appear fairly early on. And I think there's a point, isn't there, where Dade is sort of like, sorry, who are these? I was like, what, you've never heard of them before? Well, and it's not a scene, isn't it, that Estelle was talking about when Lord Nikon takes his hood off and they go around to his place. And that's when we first meet them. And it's it kind of ties in with the uh, era of MTV as well, wasn't it, where young people used to sit around and watch TV together. So I just love the... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I, I can't say this word very well in English. Is it camaraderie? Com com camaraderie, yeah. yeah. I, I love the camaraderie of, of the hacking community and it reminds me of being at university so come on who can top okay. razor and blade you can't can you <laughs> other scenes scenes so favorite um, scenes okay one of the scenes that i really liked because i think it actually resonates today is where nikon is going through the office and he's got the flowers and he's walking through and he's like listening and he's looking and seeing what passwords he can pick up um and just that whole idea of um Hacking isn't necessarily on the computer, but actually it's the, the human as the weak point. Um, and I think that resonates today as much as it did then. I'll buy that. That shoulder surfing was um, rife back in the 80s. <laughs> okay, we're still on favourite scenes. Anybody else? Thank you, Estelle. Uh, there's, there's so many. Um, I don't know where to pick. Well, well what, don't pick a favourite scene. Pick what your least favourite or one that just stood no, no, out. My favourite scene, or one of my favourite scenes is, um, I, 
I like the when they're in class and um, Kate Libby, Kate Libby, sorry, um, Acid Burn um, writes the her, her what her mum wrote, mm. and there's a moment of like the the school teacher going, "That's really powerful," but you know you're not you know does that count as a as a kind of like award-winning author and i just like i what i like about hackers is that even though it's kind of very male heavy it broke quite a few boundaries like the the woman who's very smart who's always leading the the whole group um a black hacker it's like all these things are like these were not normal in in those days i think it's really powerful those kind of things and just going along with that as well, the the serial killer cast list, you know, um, Emmanuel Goldstein. Now, if I've got the, real the right... person. Yes. So, um, we'll expand on that in a moment. But again, I thought that this is a this is an interesting character here because um, some of the ways that he dressed mm. or he behaved were not sort of overtly masculine, and. I thought oh, this is a really interesting uh, way to portray this character, um, and also a character from George Orwell's 1984. Actually, ah, okay, <laughs> that's where the name comes from. So, but, Ian, were you going to? But no, the... I, I take your point. I mean, I think your this is what I find interesting about hackers is that even though it's um, two thousand sorry 1995, and things have moved on, like to portray. It could have been very easy to portray a whole bunch of like um, white male hackers, um, and that would be really easy. But they, those interchanges, like there's a Latino guy. There's, it's like it's just, it just feels it feels fresh. I watched it again. Well, I got half of it just before this, and it still feels like really fresh. And I, I like that. Yeah, it hasn't it hasn't dated. Yeah, apart from the hack the Gibson scene, I think that was the worst scene. <laughs> Where did they come up with that name? Because obviously, mean Cray, don't they? But why? Yeah. Copyright? Copyright, most likely. <laughs> that actually rings true. They, the, 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 in my experience, it goes back a long time, a few years, five years at least, before these um, stories are portrayed. <clears throat> the, the goal is to get inside a network of Crays. And 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 uh, the guys I was looking at at the time very nearly did it. Very nearly, not yeah. quite. There's wow. still a few people we haven't heard of. Favorite scenes in the film, Claire, Les. Do... <laughs> um, yeah, uh, go on, Les. Go first. All right, thank you. Um, I like the scenes in the Cyberdelia nightclub where all the rollerbladers are going round, and it's just basically a health and safety nightmare <laughs> wrapped around the nightclub. <laughs> Yeah. It's mental because you you know you you're drinking your jolt cola, you're walking down, you're talking to your friends. All of a sudden, a rollerblade escapes over your head while you're looking at a massive screen TV playing a game which looks like Wipeout, but it's not. <laughs> it is Wipeout. A little bit. It, 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 it is, is wipeout, wipeout, yeah, but it, it's, yeah. they changed it slightly, didn't they, for the, the film since there's no cars flying. Around. Um, actually, uh, I read Les that what happened is the 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 publishing house that made Wipeout, they actually gave the movie mm. makers an advanced copy. So actually when Wipeout was, re and they tested it for them. So when Wipeout was released, it was after the movie used it. So you you know that bit where Kate wins and you get the crashing of the names? That's not yeah. in the, the Wipeout that we know. No. It's also uh, well, that the, it, the PlayStation logo is in the background or the Sony logo. I think one of the logos. So yeah, I heard that same yeah. story. And Claire, your scene. Um, I think for me, it I see. I suppose it's a cumulative of scenes, but it's when they use the vid, uh, the tape recorder on the um, the fracking on on uh, the phones. Fr oh, freaking phone freaking. freaking. Yeah, phone yes. freaking. And I think that just resonates with me the most because I remember as a kid, all these people are trying to completely sort of get free phone calls in um, phone boxes for nothing. So they would put um, string around coins or they would try pesetas or something. And I just keep on thinking, well, if they just tried something like that, maybe that would have worked and we might have had some phone boxes that actually worked. <laughs> That's right. There, 
there was a trick that you see uh, when oh, I forget the name of the character who ends up in uh, in, in in the the cell at one point, but he he uses the the ringer Joey? on the phone. Is it Joey? Yeah, Joey. yeah. which was a trick. He tapped out the number. That's right. It was a trick we used to do in the in the nineteen eighties. Sometimes people could have their on notary the old, dial locked on a prepayment book. Yes, it didn't yeah. work on the on the like. No, but welcome to my world back then. The interesting <laughs> thing about the phone um, fracking is that it was discovered by a blind boy who was pitch perfect. Oh, and he actually discovered that you could what use was... that particular note. He could he could whistle uh, twenty six hundred right, hertz. Twenty six hundred. <laughs> The, he didn't actually discover it, but it, it, it's, 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 there's a little bit of urban myth there. Captain Crunch was the uh, was the toy that you could get in, yeah. in breakfast cereals called Captain Crunch in the States. And it turned out that the tone that was emitted by the whistle, the toy whistle you could get inside the cereal packet, was almost exactly 2600 hertz, which is the forward clear signal in the US trunk system, or rather it was back then when it was all analog. Wasn't Captain Crunch as um, well quite a famous hacker? Yeah, somebody took that name, but the, but the, it was the serial that, that, that was started it all. Yeah. So there was there was something I didn't quite understand the device, uh, which was you see them in the club and they they're they're using freaking to to hack a phone, and then later on Razor and Blade then in one of their episodes also show how to do the same thing, and I I thought is this to show that these kids are so cool that they know things before the coolest like razor and blade no or it wasn't really i think i think it was to I mean, from my point of view that was because i mean you know i forgot the the um the the guy um the one of the main characters yeah he talks about how razor and blade you know they're fakes you know they're just kind of Re this, regurgitate you know, other people's yeah, exactly. so content I think, I think it was to kind of emphasize that mm. okay. i still love them though yeah yeah, yeah no, <laughs> absolutely so I'm going to ask a question now about just about some of the technology. So there was, I watched it again last night and there's a scene where um, Eugene and Eugene has other names as well. And it, he, he doesn't like being called Eugene, if, if I'm right. Anyway, so, yes, that's Babbage, it. He, he calls himself Babbage at one stage. <laughs> and then the, yeah. the NSA agent Gil Dill, he walks in at one point to see Eugene and Eugene's got a virtual reality headset on and he's got two controllers. I thought that they look, that looks pretty much exactly like the, 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 the leading brand one that you might expect to buy the Oculus Rift. It looked just yeah. like one of those. I think yeah. it was a virtuality uh, headset. It was. Yeah, it was. Not, not virtual. Oh, you mean the name was virtuality? Yeah. 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 Ah, virtuality. Okay. It, used to it was have powered that by. Parks. Yeah. Yeah, it was in the 90s, so it's, uh, it was... So this was leading temporary. me into a question was, did you see things in the film, like that might be a premonition of the future, or things that they were kind of joking about that we, we, you know, we now take seriously nowadays? And, if, you know, was there any future telling within the film? I don't know about future telling. I think there's... I mean, like the whole, I mean, so I was just also on the chat, someone was talking about dated stuff and the risk um, little rant was <laughs> was fascinating because it's like, you know, obviously Apple switched from risk to, um, you know, to i86, but then they've kind of like switched to another platform, which I think is more risk-like, if I, if I understand. So, you know, there is some, there's a bit of kind of like back and forth, back and forth, rather than, oh, look, there's this new item. It's not like the, the hoverboard in Back to the Future, which is another film that you should do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a point where Acid Burn is having a high level conversation with Zero Cool Crash Override, and they do this like, oh, yes, but what about risk? Oh, yeah, yeah, risk is the future. And, you yeah. know. Uh, Claire, did you spot any bits of technology, any devices that being used that you think are uh, was perhaps future telling or are still around with us today? I have to admit, I can't. I can't think. So the, 
there was um that there was lots it's, it's, go on kind of barging because they, they were looking backwards that that, that risk quote uh, that 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 perked me up when I heard that. That was 10 years old, that technology, by the time they referenced it. So they weren't really looking into the future, they were looking into the past, and they were saying, this is where it's all gonna go. Risk architecture was, was born at least 10 years before, at least theorized by, uh, well, by Acorn. Maybe, maybe not so much technology, yeah. but I think if we think about the, the mindset and the cultural references that we see in the movie, that's mm -hmm. where we see how they've come into play in the future. For example, they were using TV to disseminate knowledge between a community of hackers. Now we use the internet, but it is used to the same purpose, isn't it? You know, you can go on Reddit or you can go on Usenet mm -hmm. groups, etc. So, So in terms of the cultural references, we have seen some of that expand. And, and I go back to the... Uh, you can tell I'm an activist at heart, you know, but the social activism that we see in play, we are still seeing that far more prevalent now because if, if you've got the internet, you can be a 12 year old social activist from your back bedroom, which was impossible before. Dare I say, game stop. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, like, you're absolutely right. I think that's that's definitely, you are spot on. That, that idea of kind of summoning all these people together um, to overwhelm a, you know, a system which you couldn't do by yourself is that kind of activism, that social activism is really powerful. We see it you know, pretty much all the time now. Yeah. Happening in the late 80s also, but, but online on the, on the pre-web internet, um, principally X25 networks and, and bulletin board systems. Yeah. Usenet. <laughs> Well, yeah, but this is kind of what Usenet was for the uh, for, for the general public, if I can use that phrase. But um, there were other bulletin boards that, were, that had been partitioned from their, um, their their owners, if they like, the owners of certain computer systems. I won't name them, but it begins with an A, um, and um, they're not around anymore. Um, and th th they ran a bulletin board system which was almost virtually taken over by a group of hackers, or quite a large group of hackers from the US and the UK. So um, it, it, I, I don't know what I think about the word hackers, because actually to me, the, the hackers portrayed in this movie were a bunch of young people without malicious intent, actually. They were just having fun, weren't they? It was the plague that was the evil guy. <laughs> But really, I mean, if you think about it, they were just messing around in systems because, yeah. you know, we've got streaming now. But we see at the beginning of the movie, don't we? They were just hacking a system because they wanted to change what they were watching on TV. <laughs> so they don't need to do that anymore. But it was essentially, I think hacking is all about intent. And well, that's what we teach students. We, we teach students how to hack because if you don't, if you learn how to hack, you can learn how to defend yourself. It it's all about intent. There was an element of competition, though, wasn't there as well? So, for example, when Acid Burn and uh, oh, Crash Override, yeah. when they take over this OTV, there's like a bit where the robotic tape selector is such little a little bit of a, a little bit of um rivalry, like in the. Well, video game. I was going to say probably this, this whole playing of swords with the two robotic arms. I think that was stretching the truth a little bit. Mm. <laughs> You know, and, and the CGI was off the scale crazy, but I love the soundtrack. Mm. Soundtrack is, is Bob on, isn't it? Is um, modern, yeah. yeah. But, there, there were some really sort of quite happening tunes of the time. I think the, the Prodigy, there was the stereo MCs connected. Uh, you know, there's a scene where they go into the party. Left field. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Just like, this, this, is, this is like the Wipeout soundtrack. You know, it's just like... <laughs> I'll play it nice and loud earlier. <laughs> but some of the geeky references, it's back to the cultural references, like the pool on the roof, that's actually a proper cult reference. You know, that's what makes me excited about this movie. But I guess it's a, I'm a child of the times. So maybe, Alan, if you, so, I don't know, if you didn't watch it at the time and you went to the yeah. era, then... <laughs> I, I was busy getting married and starting to become a teacher and things at that time. I had other things going Important on. Important so things. I, I don't think there's any doubt amongst anybody, particularly here, that the film is recognised as a cult movie. Do you think when they started making the film, they set out to think, right, we need to make a cult movie and what are the ingredients? 
Do you think that would might have been the original intention, or you think it accidentally? No. <laughs> okay. no, they, they, I mean, sorry, there was a there was a twenty five year anniversary a little while ago, and they didn't set out to be that way. I mean, they, it's meant to be based on Kevin Mitnick's story, um, mm-hmm. and it's he obviously they kind of took it completely off into a different um, different place. But um, especially because also Hackers Two is much more the Kevin Mitnick um, story if you're interested. Well, Mitnick um, was was he was the, you know, the the archetypal social engineer. Well, he yeah. spent five but, years in jail as well. Yeah, but, yeah. There's a touch of that in there which I did like. Yeah, there's so there's aspects of it, but it's not. They never they never set out for it to be this kind of like cult classic. Um, yeah, that's what they said. There's some very interesting costumes as well, aren't there? And outfits. Uh, do you think? Spandex, Alan. Spandex. <laughs> well, not just that. There was all sorts of. You know, Jade's wearing a jacket at one point that's all ribbed down the front, and these different coloured sleeves. And do, do, do you think it? You know, was there anything in the wardrobe that you might ever wear yourself? I'd wear that hood. Uh, that <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just think it's just so cool. Oh, you're right. You literally, the first time you see him, he's got his hood on, and you're like. Oh my goodness, it? what's going on in there? And then he just <laughs> he looks under, and you're like, yeah, yeah, that's that's what I should be wearing. <laughs> At the door like that. <laughs> and Eugene, doesn't he wear like a big long black leather coat a lot of the time? Um that, that's just I suppose they're trying to they're trying to enforce certain types. Um it's the the film has also led to some people being inspired to work on certain projects related to the film, and I was thinking of Les in particular. Les, would you, because you've been inspired to do something that links to the film, yeah? Yeah, many years ago, um, I started a series of blog posts, um, like Friday Fun, it was called, and we do something a bit silly with code or electronics, something daft really. And one of the projects that started it was, uh, what is your hacker name? And it's basically a Python script which chooses two random strings, so serial killer, acid burn, that sort of thing, and just joins them together. That's all it is. And it's all used, you can all use it on the the blog to play with, and it gives you a random name, and it produces it in ASCII art. So it actually (laughs) renders it in a big typeface on the screen. So what's your hacker name, Liz? (laughs) Uh, Probably (laughs) mid-40s serial killer now, but... uh... (laughs) I have to say, uh, when when you're talking about names, one of the things that uh, strikes me is, so nowadays we're encouraged to um, give uh, make sure that our pronouns are transparent to people. And and, and actually, when I started in computing, I, I went to university in 93, I made a very conscious decision to spell my name in a gender neutral way because I was a female in a, in a male environment. And if you were on, on one of the groups online and somebody cottoned on to the fact that you were female, <laughs> things didn't always go well for you or they made assumptions about it. And, and that's interesting how that's turned on its head now. Now it's cool to be female in computing, but before you kind of kept your head down and, and went along with the boys, essentially. Just look at so, Stephanie Shirley's um, history for that one. I know, yes. Yeah, Shirley was, um, sorry, I'm thinking of a uh, Stevie. Steve. Steve, uh, Steve Shirley was yeah. Stephanie, St- Dame Stephanie Shirley as she yeah. is. Dame <laughs> Steve as she is. Um... So I, I did exactly the same thing. Hmm. So the, one of the things I like to consider and explore w- with any of these films we look at, whether there's any anything we can learn from the film, and I don't just mean fashion sense or coming up with hacker names, but whether there's sort of morals or life lessons. And I wondered if we might start with you, Estelle, because you like myself have an educational role do do you do you feel there's any point you could try to make use of the film or no you would avoid it well actually i have (laughs) i have actually used part of the the film in um it's for year nine so sort of older students um i used the scene where they're talking about the most popular passwords um, and then they had to write a Python program that basically would, would tr- uh, brute force um, through those most popular passwords. Um, and it was just a whole scheme of work around sort of how to, like Nikki was saying earlier, really, you know, learning some of the very basic techniques of 
how people hack things and then sort of ways that they can use that and to try and um, make themselves as safe as possible. Um, so yeah, so I have used it in the classroom previously. Anybody else want to chip in? Whether you think that there's valuable lessons from the film, like, oh, come on, Ian. Do you remember what happened to Dade when he <laughs> did that in the movie? <laughs> No, I, I think Estelle's example is a really good one, though. You know, it's all about intent, isn't it? Um, I think a valuable lesson is that not all hackers are evil. Mm. You know, it's, it is about intent. Sometimes you've got to think about the motivation that people have behind doing something. Yeah, so, no, I, I agree. There, were, there, there, was, there was a hint of, um, of an allusion to being addicted an addiction to hacking at one point. Um, and on, on the face of it, you might think, well, that's a bit trite and that, that, that it's pushing it a bit. But that actually is the case. Well, one, of my, um, one of my cases, one of the individuals um, avoided uh, conviction when he was, at, he was taken to court. He avoided uh, conviction by uh, the, the plea that uh, he was addicted. And that was the motivating force behind everything he did. He was a destructive little person and a bit of a wannabe. And he attached himself to a, a more established group. Um, and he kind of earned his spurs in a way because he was a willing gopher, really. He, he would be, if they could give him a password file to crack and keep him quiet, then that's what all these guys would do. Um, but he, there was a nasty side. And I can't name him because there may well be uh, consequences if I were to. But um, he was devious, extremely devious in, in maintaining his, um, his hobby, if you can call it that, or his addiction. Let's call it his addiction. Um, so yeah, these people have a... I would question their morality, actually, at the end of the day. If you know that you are <clears throat> doing something that is blatantly legal, if there is a law that, that's out there, let's say the Computer Misuse Act, for, for example, then... Um, I'd find it hard to justify anybody doing that from a moral standpoint. Law, laws are not always ethical. <laughs> oh, I, think, I think the Law Commission will probably Ooh. take, take uh, exception to that, but you know, I'm not. That's a, that's a Peter, big subject. <laughs> yeah. Peter, I couldn't help but imagine while I was watching the film, if Peter was watching this film now, he'd be really grumpy. Was there, uh, there must have been lots of things that you're watching that got you. Like, no, oh, that's rubbish. That could never happen. Yeah. Well, they were having a go at the poor policeman, the, uh, the who I couldn't get out of my mind. It's the policeman from The Wire who was in there. <laughs> and I, I kept fixating on that. But he got a raw deal out of it, didn't he? He was, um, you know... He, uh, no, I wasn't really at the edge of my seat banging on the table or anything like that. It was, it was entertaining. There's no getting away from it. It was entertaining. And there were some, there were some hints of... of, of, of truth in there from my perspective there were some anachronisms using phone freaking tones in 1995 probably wouldn't have got you very far um, for example but back in the late 80s and, and to, to, to in the 70s for, for sure that's what you did um, so uh, but but no 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 head banging no, uh, no real problem I think I think one of the things that I would take away from the movie um, if I was a teacher I'm not a teacher um, but is you know there's okay maybe if it was a little bit earlier is um, that notion of curiosity and it's good to be curious it's good to be you know geeky it's good to be you know and I think if you know, maybe in the very early 90s and before that it, it was kind of like well no you know this is not good you need to hide that from other people where there's actually, there's other people like you. You know, Dave Murphy found his people. He, he found the others. And they together uh, enjoyed what they did. You know, they shared what they did. And I think that there's something, there's something good from that, that um, that's worth taking forward um, into classrooms. Yeah. Well, yeah. actually, that's part of the Hacker Manifesto as well, isn't it? I am guilty of curiosity. Yes. We... Um... We organised an event back in 2012 called Hack to the Future and so, some people here in the panel were there and we had a, a speaker 
uh, who used the hacker name Freaky Clown. And he spoke to our audience in his keynote presentation. With, and, I, and I feel in some ways there were some parallels between the story that Freaky Clown tells and yeah. the character Dave. Maybe like, who knows what I'm talking about? Like, would you like to elaborate a little bit more? <laughs> I'm so looking are at you, you Les. <laughs> Nikki, were you there? When yeah, I do. Oh. And I know Freaky as well. Okay. So. <laughs> and I, I do always, he does have, he does resonate with me when I watch Hackers. But it, the, the great thing about the fact that Hackers reminds you of Freaky is that Freaky is now. He still works in the security industry. And that was then. So we're not really that far removed from what was going on in 1995. We've still got social engineering going on. And actually, he's far more of a social engineer than a than a software engineer, isn't he? Yeah. Alan? And for the for people who are watching who don't know, in in hackers, you see a little bit of soft engineering when uh, at the early on in the film, Dade rings up the television company and he gives them some story that oh, I'm one of the executives and I can't connect to my modem. Uh, you, you know, that's that that sort of thing. Yeah, I think he pretends he gives the name of a famous musician, doesn't he? <laughs> Right. Okay. So, um, so Freaky Clown may tell people he's a white hat hacker. Somebody mentioned that before, and we've corrected him. So, white hat hackers who apparently hack for good, they don't well, he, hack for bad. Yeah. He is now. He, yes, never, he didn't used to right. be. <laughs> it's not how he started out, was it? So, in the film, we see Dade very early on when he is. I forget, seven, 10, 11 years old. When he, and does anybody remember, was it a thousand uh, organizations that he, that he hacked into? You don't want to correct me on that, though. No. Is it like a thousand and four or something? Because yeah, Rod Nikon tells yeah. it, doesn't he? It ended in a seven, didn't it? I think. Yeah, it did, it, yeah. it did end with a seven. He wanted to correct it. And he was, he, he had this ban enforced upon him that he was restricted from using dial up and, computer access and this you see don't you later on um when he's being coaxed come on do this do this and you can see a little bit of resistance from him um mm -hmm. so did i'm just trying to explore is there a lesson that we can learn from you know did his character go through a transformation did he stay good in the end <laughs> I, I think so i think you know I think, you know, it's, it's what Nikki said, right? It's your intention, right? And there, he was helping a friend, uh, ultimately. The friend was being, um, you know, was pinned with this heinous, I'm going to use words from Packer just now, uh, heinous kind of um, crime. And he tried to prove that it wasn't. So I don't see a problem with that. You know, obviously he got pinned on him and he has a, a track record. But um, I would say that ultimately he was he was in it for, for good. He, he also had a point where uh, he wanted to kind of like, I didn't want to touch that disc because everyone goes to, to prison. But he realized that, you know, he needed to, to step in and do something. He used his knowledge for good. Hack the planet. <laughs> 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 um, Ian, before we started this, Ian was tweeting some of his, I think, his favourite quotes in the film, but they were probably all from the first 15. Does anybody have a particular quote that resonates with them that you might be able to remember? Something that's... Too many. Yeah. Yeah, too many. <laughs> There's a lot of, there is a lot of techno babble, isn't there? There's sort of a, oh, oh, uh, Kate's got a, have you seen her new modem? Oh yeah. It's got, like <laughs> Four meg of RAM on my new laptop. <laughs> but, but hold on. I, I got, I got to say. Sorry. I was going to say, I've got to say that you've got to remember that in 1995, you know, like I didn't, even, like people didn't even have laptops. Like, you know, so actually to have a laptop with, an active, was it? I can't remember the monitor refresh rate was and all that was quite, yeah, you know, that was quite something. So we got to transport ourselves back to then. It's it, especially it, it, as an, an Apple PowerBook as well, and that would have been seriously expensive. Yeah. 
Oh, you yeah. really, really. My mother was an award winning author. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love that they all had their own like bespoke start um, start screens and everything oh, as well. Yeah. Oh, that was really cool. <laughs> I tried to make my own once, um, and it didn't go well. It was using Windows to do it. <laughs> it was just like, but yeah, I love that. Have you yeah, tried I've to camouflage that. a laptop as well, Leanne? Uh, no, but I was, I was thinking about that because I did actually spray the keyboard once. But not <laughs> that, not like that. But I, with a map. <laughs> but, but, I, but I remember, like, you know, if you look at most people's, especially during the, the late uh, 2000s, that's, yeah, um, people used to put stickers on their laptop because they wanted to kind of, you know, make it there. So I think there's some there's something not quite the same as spraying. Oh, let they go. Thanks, Liz. Um, there you go. So, but and just the, that idea of trying to, to change it to make it yours is still there. I'm really impressed that Les can pick his laptop up while he's in a Zoom session, show us the stickers that are on it, and and still and not interrupt his video. <laughs> From the chat on YouTube, Ben has said he he, he likes the fact there's lots of poetry throughout the film, mm. and. It might be Geraldine. Her favorite quote is that, well, there goes MIT. Does anybody remember that? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember when it happened, Estelle? Yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Maggie. <laughs> it, was, it was when they're trying to persuade her to basically get on board with the plan, really, isn't it? And she's, yeah. She's saying, right. if I help, we can do it in six minutes. Oh, if I help, you can do it in four minutes. Oh, and it's like, don't send a woman to, don't send a man to do a woman's job. <laughs> <laughs> that bit, wasn't it? Yeah. I love her. She's great. Claire, have you ever got excited over a, a new modem <laughs> with a refresh rate of whatever it was, or some other piece of tech in the same way? Um, yes. I got a new computer last year and it's got 36 gig gigabyte of RAM on it. And I've never been so excited about anything in my whole entire life. <laughs> I've never used that amount of RAM at one time. You know, I don't really need 32 gigabytes of RAM, but, you know, it's, just run it's, Visual Studio on it. it yeah, I, wonder, I, do. I, I did wonder if that's a stereotype that they use a little bit too much the way all these young hackers can just reel off all the technical specifications. Like, look at Kate's computer. It's got, and it, they're like encyclopedias. They know what the specification is of, of that. Do you think that's overused in the film? Or do you, do you not know the specification of your own laptop, Alan? Everyone knows yeah, this. Come right? on, Alan. <laughs> come on, Alan. <laughs> What yeah. kind of technique are you? <laughs> I can tell you how many keys there are in this if you give me a moment. <laughs> Alan's probably got too many computers to know all his specs. <laughs> That's what it'll be. Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of them are made of cardboard. Yeah, that? That's what I was going to say. <laughs> the V26, I got a V26 modem once and I thought I was a bee's knees. At nine point <laughs> kilobits a second. How about that? <laughs> Well, isn't there a, I was, I was a at the time there's a part where it, it's I, i'm i get confused when i watch the film because eugene walks in at one point and he's like trying to get dade on side then he goes all scary with the baseball bat you think where is this leading and he smashes his stereo up and then he sends him a new laptop <laughs> come on eugene just think clearly which strategy are you going with what about the bit where when he takes the disc and then he skates off into the oh. phone <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah. It was, and it holds on to the limo. That is, yeah, that that is classic. Yeah. That's brilliant. Isn't <laughs> it? As a skateboarder, that's that is that's awesome. <laughs> so, this is why I love it because it's such a zany, unrealistic plot line. It's just brilliant. Because <laughs> the, the, the scene is Dave is supposed to be meeting for this clandestine. Um, is it called a drop, Peter? Is that what they call it? A, a bag drop or something? Where you. A dead so, drop. Yeah. yeah, okay. A dead drop. Yep. Yeah. Dead drop. And this yeah. limousine comes and Dade's thinking, oh, they, they, this this must be it. This must be it. And then <laughs> Eugene comes with his black leather coat flapping in the breeze on the skateboard. And and then Dade does this double take. And, oh, I'm going to run after it. And then he kind of goes, oh, no. <laughs> Why did Dade not have his rollerblades on then? It's raining. <laughs> I think there was <laughs> yeah, but the skateboard, you know, and skateboards and vehicles. Uh, okay, did you, did you spot any other flaws you thought in the plot that 
there are no flaws in hackers. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess we can go back to the Gibson hacking the Gibson scene. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That. That. Okay. That's fair enough. <laughs> but apart from that, there are no flaws in hackers. Yes. <laughs> there are no flaws in hackers. There are none. <laughs> Somebody describe, please, what what you think the Gibson looked like? Because to me, it just seemed to be like a load of flashy lights and actually no actual hardware to it. It's probably what Peter's got in his background. <laughs> 1940s style, that is. Not even a computer, but there you go. I can, I can imagine. I can imagine. Okay, so... Yeah, all but all seriousness now. Um, I can imagine. So when, when I used to look at the silicon graphics machines, the they Indies, put yeah. yeah they put a lot of effort into the look of it. So it was these kind of like sleek, amazing looking machines, and they were they were powerful underneath, but they had this outer shell which was like, wow, you know, you saw it and you were like. Oh my god, that is that's got to be a silicon graphic. I guess it's like a bit like Apple right now, right? It's like that you can recognize it from a mile away. Yeah. Oh, Nick on the YouTube chat has asked, why did they end the film in a swimming pool? Why did they not just grab their laptops and skip <laughs> off into the sun with their wireless network? It was just a, it was a cult. It's actually a cult reference. Um the film was filmed in this high school who, who did have a swimming pool on the roof. And I think one of the practical jokes that the high school is famous for was that particular joke about the swimming pool. So it's a, it's a real thing that happened in real life. So there's your, another obscure cult reference about hackers. <laughs> Peter, are you convinced now any more positively? To... Still, uh, still doesn't have a storyline. <laughs> And, and I, I've got to say, I'll be honest here, that, that it's such a cool ending to a movie, you know, because they've obviously got their, their names up, so there's still the, the hacking still kind of playing, and it's just like, and obviously he's wearing a skirt, she's wearing a skirt, you know, uh, or dress, you know, it's like, this is, this is the way that uh, a movie should end, not kind of them skipping off into the, into like the sunlight or whatever. Mm. You mentioned then a, a, a very impressive scene where there's these tall buildings that could be the World Trade Center. It's not absolutely clear. And the lights are switching on in the floors um, like pixels to, to, mm. to, to display their names. Right. We are approaching the end of uh, our little gut together. I have a question for you, Alan. <laughs> yes. What's, what's the bit that you do not like? Come on. I just. Uh, to me, it it just felt like there was too many cultural references, too many things being shoved in, uh, like the skateboards, the rollerblades, the the, and I I, I just felt it was uh, system overload. <laughs> that would be my <laughs> hacker name. <laughs> That's a good hacker name. I like it. Um, so. Um, I think what I need you to do now is to think about the final question is what other films should we be watching in the future? We've already had sneakers. So we've got a few, few moments to think. Um, we have another few months to go for the rest of the year and we're looking for your recommendations. Um, Ian has typed in the word true. That's not oh, a film that oh, I've seen before. No, no, that was just um. This is me having a little bit of a JP. In that okay. Case. I'll, I'll recommend what I recommend every time you ask that question, and it's a TV show called Halt and Catch Fire. Oh, oh. yeah, yeah, seen that. Yes. So that's on the list. The problem is Amazon like to change some of the ways that they charge people for stuff. So at the moment, Halt and Catch Fire, you have to pay. Yeah, it was on Prime at one stage. That's but... right. But now, if you're even if you're a Prime member, you still have to pay. And I'm trying mm -hmm. to choose. So hackers, I don't know if you know this, but if you look for hackers online to purchase, you can get it for about one or two pounds, including shipping. I've seen it in charity shops a few times. So there must be a few million copies floating around on DVD somewhere. Um, OK, so we've got Halt and Catch Fire. It's definitely one on the list. It was one we were planning to, 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 to view. Yeah, yes, you've, you've been much more quiet than I expected you were going to be tonight. Any films you'd like to recommend? 
I'm wondering, Alan, though, with it being International Women's Day in March, whether we could focus on something that has a, a female lead, for example, and if they exist, okay. <laughs> do technology films with female leads exist? We've already had Hidden Figures, which is a shame because that one would have been perfect. Yeah. And uh, The Net. Okay. With Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock, yeah, because now that's more... That's more what life is right now anyway, because we're all ordering pizza doesn't online. We're all reviewing yeah. each... Yeah, we don't leave the house. Yeah. Is it the one where she doesn't do. leave the house and just eats pizza all the time? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. she's fixing um, viruses where you press a special key combination. I think it's the Pi logo. That's the, the really Pi good symbol. shout, that. Yeah. It's been a long time since I've watched the net, but yeah. <laughs> so, and on YouTube, we've got a few more. We've had Dave has suggested Social Dilemma, so... Dave might not have been around a month or two ago when we did review The Social Dilemma, Dave. You need to do your homework before you come along. <laughs> and um, yeah, a Halt and Catch Fire is, is, is definitely, I would recommend it. Uh, Jerry says, if we were living in the United States, we'd be able to watch it for free as part of our Netflix subscription. But it's, I, as far as I know, it's not currently available on there. So the net's looking like a good one. Um, there How is about uh, Ready Player One? Right. Oh, I no love Ready Player One. That till now. Okay, so that's one that we're going to. The book be... is also really, really good. Yeah, I love the book. Yeah. Um, there's also Peter might be able to help me. This year, now, uh, 2021 marks the 40th anniversary of when the the BBC microcomputer with uh, technology microcomputer and education project started. And there is available on YouTube a recording of a drama back the micro men micro men so that's another one that we could watch a little bit in the future i don't know if anybody here has seen that this week. yeah i'm, pretty good. Good. I'm more probably, excited about ready player one yeah i was gonna say <laughs> micro men's probably not a great one for international women's day <laughs> Unless we're trying the, net, to... the net sounds like a really good one for that yeah. but ready player one is good because the i suppose that the person fighting the system is female isn't she um, so, and Ben has said that Ready Player Two is out already. So there we go. But only only the the audio and book, not the actual yeah. film. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. So maybe Ben's not done his homework, or he's going to disagree with you. Right. Okay. So we've had uh, about a full forty five minutes or so of discussion of hackers. I'm still not absolutely convinced. It's it's one to be top on the shelf. Alan, hack the planet! Hack <laughs> the planet! Yeah, that's not going to end well. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you very much to our panel guests. We've had Ian Forrester, Peter Hose, Les Pounder, Estelle Ashman, Claire Price and Nikki Danino. We will be back again next month. We're probably going to go with the net. I just need to do my homework. And we, Eye in the Sky is one we're going to be watching a little bit later on as well. I think that's got some useful uh, drone things to link to. And we need to add in a space film. We've not really done any space. The Martian. The Martian. Yeah. The Martian, yeah. yeah. Particularly as... There is a, a very uh, interesting hacking scene in Independence Day where they hack the alien ships. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. They just happen to have the right connector, don't they? Yeah, yeah, and they do it on a MacBook as well. I'm sure yes. of it. <laughs> um, okay, so we're gonna we're gonna wrap things up just a little bit. There's a couple of things I did want to mention, which is I, if if you've been living in a vacuum and you haven't been on social media or whatever, you might not know that tomorrow evening from about seven fifteen, you can there's a lo, uh, a live stream that explains what's going on with this perseverance craft and ingenuity that at the moment are going to land the plan is tomorrow and although there's like an 11 minute delay so it might crash and burn and it may be 11 minutes or so before we find out or uh, or so so that's happening tomorrow evening and then um, just a little thing. You, it, it, I don't know if you ever watch BBC Click, but you might want to watch it this Saturday. Peter's nodding oh, yes. because yes. a crew visited the National <laughs> Museum of Computing. And there's some links there. And they also visited a, a, a domestic residence in Preston to, to look at some giant cardboard computers, apparently. Very so. <laughs> 
Okay, so everybody, we're going to wave goodbye uh, while I do the click three, four, five red buttons or whatever it is that will end the stream, end the meeting for everybody and all of that. Okay.